Hi, everybody. I'm assuming that you have seen the video for Unit 2, Activity 1, but have not yet done uh, Unit 2, Activity 2. Our results for Unit 1, Activity 1 are kind of strange uh, if we're going by what we thought we knew from Unit 1. So it seems like we need to uh, update some of our thinking a little bit. And I just want us to think about what we saw in that circuit. Um, we had a battery. This is a three cell battery here. Uh, positive end is the long line. The negative end of the battery is the short line. Uh, we had coming from the positive terminal of the battery, we had two bulbs and then on to the capacitor. And then from the other end of the capacitor back to the battery. But we know that this section right in here, we know inside that capacitor, uh, we know that there is a, an open loop because we know that it's an insulator in between the two conductors. So we do not have a closed pathway inside. And so these results are kind of strange. Now, if we think about what we know of the flow of charge, we think about our conventional current direction is going from positive to negative. So thinking about the positive terminal, the battery being right here, if we want to think about what could have made these bulbs light up, we know that charge must have flowed through those bulbs because we saw that they did briefly glow, but not for long. So we might think that charge came from the positive end of the battery, went through this first wire, through the bulb, through the next wire, through the other bulb, and then to the capacitor. But we know that that stops. Now, a key question that is still in my mind, and I think one that we should all be wondering is, is there any Thing happening here in wire D. Is there any charge that flows through wire D? I don't think we have any evidence for that just yet. Um, we might have some thoughts about that. I would like for you to think about that a little bit before we move on to actually doing activity two. But the problem we have with this setup right now is that we don't have any tools that we could use to decide whether anything did flow through wire D. We could tell that current must have flowed through wire B at least briefly because we did see the two bulbs glow, but we don't have a bulb down here. Um, so maybe for activity two, we wanna reconfigure our circuit so that we have a bulb down here on this side as a way that we could gather some kind of evidence is there anything happening on that bottom side of the circuit? Uh, another tool that we can use and will use is a compass. And we can use a compass to check what direction will charges move through different parts of that circuit. So that's what we need to investigate next. And let's move on then to activity two.